All right, let's take a look at some vocab. So the questions that we want to address in this video, and these questions will show up again at the end of the video so that you can try to answer them. Um, where do students learn most of the words they use? Uh, do you know what tier three words are? Um, here's just a little piece of advice on the third bullet, I guess. Um, if you don't know what a word means, don't panic. Uh, you're being tested on ability to break words down, not necessarily like how many crazy big words. That's definitely true. And some knowledge of prefixes and suffixes that we're going to go over are very useful and is really what you're going to be tested on much more so than how many words you know. Um, and examples here are the prefix contra, you know what that means. The suffix a, do you know what that means? Those are two very common ones. <clears throat> okay, surroundings. Uh, students learn most of the words they use from the world around them. This can be teachers, other students, parents, siblings, media. So it's important to be using the words that you are trying to develop for them. That is important. Uh, tier 3 words. Tier 3 words are commonly defined as low frequency, subject specific words. Mathematics, medical, legal, words like that. They all relate to specific subjects or professions. So thinking, again, tier 3 words, <clears throat> it's going to relate to either a subject or a profession. Uh, student vocabulary development. Students vocabulary can be developed in many ways. Calling upon prior knowledge and making a comparison to that knowledge is a proven technique. Defining the word and providing various examples of the word in context, in context rather, is also helpful. Providing instruction on suffixes, prefixes, and roots is also a good idea. And again, we're about to jump into that in a minute. Other ways to develop vocabulary is by having a print-rich classroom with a word wall, studying a group of words connected to a single subject, and showing a student how to use context clues. Okay. <clears throat> okay, derivation. There can be a derivation question. There often is. Um, for example, there are many French words in the English language. Some of the most common ones are food and eating. So those would be words like biscuit or menu. Uh, military terms that have French derivation, like camouflage. Uh, diplomatic words, like diplomat <laughs> or regime. And uh, entertainment words, like ballet and sport. So those are all, all of French derivation, right? And just having it in your mind, there, there's a decent chance that the answer <laughs> to a question is French derivation um, as we get ready for this test. Okay, suffixes. So we'll go over a few of different types here. So uh, adjectival suffix uh, typically end with uh, F-U-L, right? Uh, other common endings are less and able. Noun suffixes refer to the act of doing something, such as enjoyment. The ment, M-E-N-T, added to the end makes the word the act of enjoying something. The other type of noun suffix denotes the doer of something. For example, adding hood to the word knight gives us knighthood. Other typical noun suffixes are ness, N-E-S-S, uh, T-I-O-N, and ism. Uh, verb suffixes denote to make or to perform. Typically we will see uh, en added to the end of verb suffixes. So those, that would be words like soften or harden. Those would apply as verb suffixes. Uh, this is one of our questions. A suffix beginning in a means not. For example, asymmetric means not symmetric. Anti means against. So if you think of anti-inflammatory, co means together, like co-founder. That means that they founded something together. And the suffix dis, D-I-S, means negative or remove, such as dislike. 
And then finally, our last one here, the suffix uh, logy, L-O-G-Y, means the study of, as you might hear in biology, for example. The root bio means life, so biology means the study of life. Okay, so really what you want to be taken away from here is like with suffixes that a lot of times they're going to help you out with words that you might not know and so if you see a couple words you don't know rather than just randomly guessing and moving on consider some of these suffixes and if that can help you with the answer and we have a few more other commonly tested concepts uh, contra can show up uh, that's a prefix that means against anything that ends in ism refers to a belief or doc doctrine such as Judaism or skepticism. Anything that ends in ACY refers to it being a state or quality, like democracy. Anything that ends in AL is an action or a process, such as denial. And anything that ends in DOM, D O M, is a place or state of being, like freedom or kingdom. Okay, so this help, we now go back to our questions, right? So we have really four of them. The third one's not a question, just again, advice on what to do if you don't know what a word means. So we'll have you, you hit the pause button and jump into these questions, see if you can remember what tier three words are, um, where do students learn most of the words they use, right? That was at the very beginning on surroundings. The prefix contra we just discussed and the prefix A uh, we also just discussed a little bit ago.